Hello and welcome to this, the very first episode of Boarding Now with me, Jeremy Spake. Here's what's coming up in today's programme. I'm going to be jumping on my soapbox, talking about things that are happening around the world, a little bit of travel news, a special destination feature, and loads of great sounds. We've got a lot to get through in the next 60 minutes, but before we get too carried away with ourselves, fasten those seatbelts and prepare for takeoff with a little bit of Adele. It's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to me to go over everything. They say the time's supposed to heal you, but I ain't done much healing. Hello, can you hear me? I'm in California dreaming about who we used to be when we were younger and free. I've forgotten how it felt before the world fell at our feet. There's such a difference between us and a million miles. Hello from the
What a fantastic way to start the show in terms of music. Adele there with Hello. Now, if you're an Adele fan, I highly recommend that you go looking for clips of her with James Corden in the final episode of Carpool Karaoke. It's just brilliant. There you have James sitting very uncomfortably in the passenger seat for a change and Adele at the wheel. And the pair of them put the world to rights. It's just brilliant. So give it a whirl. Find it on YouTube. Speaking about the world, this is the part of the programme where I share with you my views on some of the events that are taking place around the globe in the past month. Now, you would need it to have been completely comatose not to have noticed that Great Britain hosted a coronation at the weekend. Now, whether you're a royalist or a republican, you couldn't help but admit that Britain was truly great at the weekend. If, like me, you wonder what we do that's great anymore, um, you were left in no doubt that the one thing that we can always do and be relied upon achieving is splendour when it comes to pomp and circumstance. Over a thousand years of history played their way across our screens around the world as we watched King Charles III and Queen Camilla uh, at their coronation. And I have to say, um, it was a fantastic event. Well rehearsed and well executed. Now, pardon the pun, but it was definitely King Charles's crowning glory on Saturday when he finally, after 70 years, became the king and is now serving the nation and keeping his arms wrapped warmly around the Commonwealth. And if I'm honest, I think he's actually started off pretty well. Um, and what makes me say that? Well, he managed to cut down the congregation from about four or 5,000 to a nice manageable 2,000. And uh, that's a sign that he's willing and able and wanting to modernise the monarchy and to make it more real for people. And I, for one, sat in awe of everything that we've managed to achieve on Saturday. Um, he made only one error, in my opinion, um, and it's probably not his job, but uh, he invited Liz Truss. Now, I'm not entirely sure what she ever did to warrant an invitation to sit there in Westminster Abbey and uh, enjoy the, the wonderful music and the ambiance of a British coronation. Uh, let's face it, she only did three or four weeks in the job itself as Prime Minister. But I guess if you invite one Prime Minister that's still alive, you invite them all. And yes, she wasn't going to miss the opportunity. Did you see Boris Johnson? Bless him. He still hasn't managed to sort his hair out. I have the same problem as him every day. Bless him. But the one person in the congregation who struck me as being delighted to be there was the President of France. Yes, Monsieur Macron was delighted to be there for one reason and one reason only. He was avoiding his own people. Yes, he didn't want to be in Paris or any other part of France where they're all up in arms at the thought of having to work a bit longer and a little bit harder before they're allowed to draw their pensions. Yes, Monsieur Macron has used his powers to instigate a new law in France which will see people working until they're 64. Can you imagine it? During the protests that we saw on television, there was one retired person telling us that she thought it was absolutely disgusting. I'm slightly surprised at that because she's already retired and pulling her pension. So, yeah, Mr Macron was glad not to be there. Now, one person who was absent on the day was the wonderful... Uh, President of America, Joe Biden. Now, you know me, if you've been following my blog, I've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about Joe Biden because he's the only man that can't climb or descend aircraft steps without getting himself into some sort of pickle. Bless him. But it was OK because he made sure that somebody was there to represent him. And yes, his wife and daughter were there, uh, making sure that we hadn't forgotten about the special relationship that exists between the UK and the USA. Now, you may not have noticed, but in the last month, he has declared his intention to run for president again. Now, is the world really ready for that? I'm not entirely sure. America probably needs a younger, more agile president, certainly one who can get up and down aircraft steps without making a fool of himself. Uh, will Mr. Biden get in? Hard to say. Of course, the news has also been full of his friend, Yes, Donald Trump. Yes, he's there giving it large, trying to deny knowledge of a whole host of things. And the state of New York is determined to make sure that he's not available uh, when the general election takes place in the US next year. Now, it would be absolutely wrong of me at this point in the programme not to play something to 
take us to America. So with no further ado, here is Madonna with American Pie. A long, long time ago, I can still remember how that music used to make me smile. And I knew that if I had my chance, I could make those people dance. And maybe they'd be happy for a while. This is the part in the program where I ask you to be completely honest with yourselves. How many of you, when you're travelling, pay any attention to the captain when they ask you to 
Give the crew your undivided attention during the safety demonstration as some features of our safety programme may differ from other companies that you've travelled with. Yes, if truth be known, the vast majority of you pay absolutely no attention whatsoever to the safety procedures that need to be undertaken in the unlikely event of an emergency taking place. Now, one airline has decided enough is enough. We need to get the attention of our passengers and we need to make sure that they are au fait with what's required of them should they need to evacuate the aircraft. If you saw these images, you could be forgiven for thinking that they're screenshots from the latest episode of EastEnders, but they are in fact screenshots from the new British Airways Safety On Board video, which is packed with famous faces, members of crew and passengers, explaining to you what you need to do aboard their aircraft in the unlikely event of an incident taking place. Silence. Why silence? Because actually the video is really good. Surprisingly, it hits all of the buttons. It's engaging, it's interesting, and above all else, the safety message comes across. If you haven't seen it, it is available on YouTube and I would highly recommend a viewing. Now another company that's actually got a really good video to engage with its customers during a safety demonstration is the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Yep, go figure, the ferry company that operates between the Isle of Man and the UK have engaged the services of this very haughty pirate who reminds us all to behave ourselves, make sure that we take off our high-heeled shoes and observe where our nearest muster station is. And I have to say it works. People do stop and they appear to be watching. How do I know? Because I am a regular user of the services between the UK and the Isle of Man. And if we're all honest, if you've ever been on the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company, certainly in the last five or six years, you'd agree that the vessels are tired and in need of a facelift. Well, hope is definitely on the horizon because the Steam Packet Company will be taking delivery of its brand new vessel, the Manxman, uh, sometime in the next 12 months. The vessel is currently undergoing sea trials and will definitely be an upgrade on the current Ben McCree, which is probably in need of retirement. Believe it or not, it's actually a year since my series Airport Back in the Skies first transmitted telling the story of the devastating impact that the COVID pandemic had on aviation around the globe. Now, to be honest, we are still somewhat licking our wounds as we try to decide what travel is going to look like over the next 10 years, particularly in the premium cabins. You know, will customers actually have the money to spend on first business and premium economy? Lots of airlines are now hesitating about improving their propositions. However, it's really good to see that some companies have decided that actually, if you're going to spend money in those cabins, you really want the very best that you can get. So airlines like Lufthansa are introducing some amazing enhancements to their business and first class products. And Lufthansa has actually taken it one step further. They are introducing no fewer than six different types of business class. One to watch for sure. Speaking about the series Airport Back in the Skies, some of you will have seen me um, traveling with JetBlue across the Atlantic, and they definitely are a disruptor um, in terms of the premium cabin offering across the Atlantic. It's affordable and it's really good quality, but they're not the only airline um, who provide business class uh, across a low cost platform. Um, if you go to Dubai regularly, you probably travel Emirates. However, they have a low cost airline in Dubai called Fly Dubai, and they are now mirroring um, the JetBlue experience and upgrading their business class cabin. And they have actually released in the last um, 10 days um, images of what their cabin is gonna look like. And although it is a little beige for my liking, um, I have to say it looks like it's gonna be on a par with JetBlue. So further disruption to the premium cabins um, caused by low cost airlines who want to give their customers the very best. Time now for some more music and who better to follow the travel news than Passenger with the hit Circles.
It's been years since we carved our names on a clock tower door before everything changed. We were big eyed boys with the salt on our skin, and we'd throw our kites to the wind, and they fly on and on and on. On our skin, and they'll throw our dust to the wind. Now, anyone that knows me will know that I am traditionally a happy person who spends his time sharing the love and trying to be a really good human with others. Um, there are occasionally um, moments in life when that patience gets stretched to the limit, which is why we've introduced this particular feature in the podcast, and it's my soapbox. Yes, it's that moment where I step up onto my box and have a complete and utter rant about something that's driven me mad in the past month. Now, ordinarily, this first episode wouldn't have had a great deal in it, other than a little bit of a whinge about how my postal prices have soared and yet my post isn't getting delivered. But that's for another show. Honestly, trust me. I like our postman. He's a nice guy. And, uh, you know, things go up in life. That's the, the, the nature of our economy. Um, no, my rant this month is all because um, I've discovered just how unhelpful insurance companies can be. Um, they're very quick to take your money. They're always very efficient when it comes to handling that sales inquiry, uh, whether it's online or by the telephone. It's a hassle-free experience. You get to the end of it, you part with your premium, and you have this nice warm glow around you, feeling secure, knowing that if anything should happen, the insurers will come along with their suitcase full of tricks that will remedy all of your um, woes. Um, till, of course, the day comes when you make that phone call to say, oops, had a bit of an incident, need your help. Because I've just discovered um, that my motor insurance policy um, really isn't what it says on the tin, unfortunately. Um, I don't know about you, if you've ever made a claim against an insurance company, if you've had a hassle-free experience, I'm truly delighted for you. But imagine the scene, it's um, half past 11 at night, um, you're driving along doing 35 in a 40, and that's the truth and um, you're just overtaking a, a stationary um, oil tanker and a muntjac deer decides to jump out in front of you, um, 
giving you zero opportunity to stop the car, um, you know, to afford the animal the opportunity to stroll across the road at their own pace. Because this is exactly what happened to me a few weeks ago when I was heading home from an AGM of the Women's Institute in Bedfordshire. Great women, had a lovely time, ended the event, um, got in the car feeling quite euphoric, and as I was driving home, taking one of a multitude of detours caused by roadworks, um, a muntjac deer decided that uh, he was going to commit Harry Carry in front of my car. Car. Now, I'm deeply saddened by um, the muntjac deer not surviving the incident, but it wasn't the only thing that didn't survive the incident. My car became a victim of the muntjac's appearance. So there I was at midnight making the call to the insurers to say to them, right, I've had an incident, deer's hopped out in front of me, it's late, I'm 110 miles from home, need to get back, car needs to get there, what are we doing? So for two and a half hours, I bounced from one call centre to the next, to the next, to the next, until I finally got a very nice Polish lady who said that she would arrange a recovery of my vehicle and myself to my home. So, OK, there we are, half past two, three o'clock in the morning, freezing one's particulars off because I'd foolishly not got a car blanket in the car, which is the most sensible thing most people would do. And uh, sure enough, uh, the recovery vehicle turned up, cracking fella. And uh, the first thing he said to me was, um, I'm taking your vehicle to Harlow. Now, if anybody's been along the M11, you'll know that Harlow is just up the road from Stansted Airport. And unfortunately, it's 60 miles in the wrong direction. It's not where I wanted to be at all. Um, I didn't mind where the car went. I just didn't want to be there, um, you know, in Harlow uh, at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, sure enough, um, he was very kind, explained to me that, no, we only recover the vehicle, not the person. I said, OK, that's pretty helpful. Uh, it wasn't his fault. So off I went, uh, dutifully found a taxi rank and headed home in a cab. Now, you'd have thought that would have been the end of it, really, wouldn't you? Um, when I looked at my policy, if the incident wasn't your fault, yes, you're entitled to a courtesy car because I needed a courtesy car to be able to ferry a few relatives around because the other cars I've got are all a bit small and uh, in fairness, you do need to be fairly good at limbo dancing to get in and out of them. Um, and how I manage it, I really have no idea, to be honest. Um, so anyway, I had my lengthy conversation with the insurers the following morning and have a guess how long it took them to answer the phone. Two and a half hours. Only for me to be told that because the deer wasn't insured, and because they couldn't claim against the deer for standing out in front of me, I was going to have to cop all of the responsibility. And sure enough, I wasn't getting a courtesy car. So, well, I just saw red. Um, more importantly, I'd spent two and a half hours waiting to be answered. So I thought I'd do a little test because it's the sort of thing you do when you're um, spending most of your life trying to rectify um, a problem. I phoned the sales department of this particular insurer and uh, sure enough, my call was answered within three rings. And uh, they were keen to ask me how they could help me with my policy. Um, and I said to them, well, actually, I'd like you to sell me a policy in future that's fit for purpose. Um, you know, how do you solicit for a deer stepping out into the middle of the road? And the insurer reliably informed me that this is quite a common occurrence. And in fact, they'd had 20 odd claims over the weekend for the same thing. And I began to think that perhaps they think I'm telling them lies. Anyway, the, the moral of the story is when you buy insurance for your vehicle and you want to be certain of having a courtesy car, make sure in your policy it says you are guaranteed a courtesy car, regardless of who's at fault, because it's the only way you're going to get one out of them. And hearing how your day has been Do you think you can tell me everything, darling? But leave out every part about him Right now you're probably by the ocean While I'm still out here in the rain with every day that passes by since we've spoken It's like Glasgow gets farther from LA Maybe it's supposed to be this way But oh my love I wanna say I miss the green in your eyes And when I said we could be friends, guess I lied I wanna say I wish that you never left I 
Well, I can't help but notice You seem happier than ever now And I guess that I should tell you I'm sorry It seems I was the problem somehow Maybe I only brought you down But oh my I could say it's something I really mean But I want you happy where the night is with me I wanna see, I wish that you never left Oh, but instead I only wish you the best I wanna see without you everything's wrong And you were everything I need all along I wanna say I wish that you never left See insurance companies, I don't hold a grudge. I'm wishing you the best there with Lewis Capaldi's assistance. His latest single, which uh, seems appropriate. All I would ask in order for me to step off my soapbox is for you to answer your claims lines just a little bit quicker in future because two hours is too long. Now, over the years, I've been very lucky indeed. You know, staff travel has meant that I've had the opportunity to traverse the globe and discover some of our hidden gems. So each month, just because I'm the sort of guy that likes to share, I will be bringing you a special feature from a destination that has sparked my imagination and had me rushing to pack my suitcase for a second visit. My first destination is a particular favourite of mine. It's nestled along the Adriatic and is a hidden gem that has something to offer everybody. Welcome to Montenegro, the small country of great opportunities, unusual, different, unique. Welcome to a hidden corner of the planet, yet to be discovered by the rest of the world. Podgorica, the capital city, located in a green valley only 40 kilometers from the sea, connecting southern and northern Montenegro, as well as different cultures, religions and nations. Cetinje, the cultural and historical treasury of a nation, the spiritual capital of Montenegro, a small city guarding the story of a king, his kingdom, his family, and his subjects. 
After visiting the Satinye Monastery, you can go up to Ivanabo Corita to see Mount Lovchin. Budva, beautiful sandy beaches and tranquil villages in the hinterland. The peace and quiet of its monastery gardens, hidden coves, glamorous hotels, the best music festivals and concerts in Europe, the city of outdoor theatre stages, the cosy terraces of fish restaurants. Budva is also home to Sveti Stefan, a glamorous island. Bar, on the shores of the sea and the lake, a city of olives and wine and multi-ethnic harmony. Its 2,000 years old olive tree, the old town, the magnificent Skada Lake and the Sumitsa hinterland, whose wine cellars reportedly make the best Montenegrin wine, the Sumitsa Vranats. Ulcin keeps within its walls the history of famous warriors, pirates and prisoners, such as the celebrated Cervantes. The beauty of a completely different Montenegro is hidden here, on the most beautiful beaches on the Adriatic Sea, in its waves and its winds, in the wooden cottages on the river Boyana, in the colourful feathers of the flamingos at Solana, at music festivals, and in the healing waters springing from the depths of the earth. The Bay of Kotor, the only fjord in the Mediterranean, like a string of pearls, many towns and villages are lined up along the entire bay. It is difficult to decide which one is more beautiful than the other and which one is more admired by the visitors. Is it Kotor, surrounded by the impressive 16th century walls, the city of carnivals and masked balls, music and dance? Kotor, with the Cathedral of St. Tripium, the Castle of San Giovanni, or St. Luke's Church. Perhaps it is the Baroque town of Perast and its Roman mosaics. They also admire Tivat, the former summer residence of rulers, noblemen and poets, its salt pans, the largest park in Montenegro, and Porto Montenegro, the most luxurious mega yacht marina in the Mediterranean. The sunny city of Herzeg Novi its many steps descending towards the sea, its everlasting vegetation and famous mimosa blossoms have been attracting painters, poets and writers for centuries. The national parks of Montenegro are the country's greatest treasury. Lovchim, with its dense forests and the scenic village of Niegoshi, Durmitor, with the wild river Tara, glacier lakes, Skada Lake with its Dalmatian pelican and Rieka Cernovica, Biogradska Gora with the Biogradska Lake located in the heart of Europe's last virgin forest, Prokletie with Ali Pasha's springs, Lake Plav and its unexplored breathtaking beauty. And we haven't shown you everything yet, Kolashin the largest ski centre, a mountain town where you will enjoy the specialities of our national cuisine. Tara, the deepest canyon in Europe and the river that offers rafting from your wildest dreams. The most magnificent mountain centre, Zabiak, attractive during the winter, maybe even more so in the summer, with its many hiking paths reveal the multitude of charms offered by Mount Dormitor and its lakes. What makes this country unique is primarily its extraordinary and wild beauty. Montenegro is characterized by diversity, even contradictions, both in the natural sceneries, quickly interchanging without warning, and in the tastes and aromas of its food and drinks starting from the Mediterranean specialities, through the lake delicacies and famous wines, all the way to the traditional mountain dishes. In the course of only one day, one can enjoy magical sandy beaches, go rafting along the Tara River, see Italy from the top of Mount Lovchin, 
ski in Kalashin, go surfing on Adaboyana, or fishing on the lakes. This country has been built by three different cultures and spiritually shaped by its famous artists. In Montenegro, you can find your peace, quiet and tranquility. You can find your passionate, adventurous side. You can find happiness in the little things. You can find yourself. I don't know about you, but straight after this episode, I'm going to be rushing to uh, book my next trip to the beautiful country of Montenegro. Hopefully that's inspired and sparked your imagination as much as it does me. Um, it's a truly wonderful destination that has something to offer everybody. And if you're curious and would like to know how to get there, here's a few options. EasyJet and Jet2.com both offer regular flights to Tivat and the major European airlines offer flights via their European hubs. As you can see there are plenty of ways of getting to Montenegro um, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some great deals out there right now. Um, personally I like to go in September, um, slightly less people but the weather's still absolutely fantastic so if you're there in September you may well bump into me. Oh heavens above they say please don't do that to us. Now having seen all that wonderful architecture time for another tune so it seemed appropriate that the best thing for me to play right now is Castle on the Hill by Ed Sheeran. I was running from my brother and his friends And tasted the sweet perfume of the mountain grass I rolled down I was younger then Take me back to when I found my heart Broke it here, made friends and lost them through the years and I've not seen the boring fields in so long I know I've grown, but I can't wait to go home Kiss on a Friday night I don't reckon that I did it right But I was younger then Take me back to when We found weekend jobs And when we got paid We'd buy cheap spirits and drink them straight Me and my friends have not thrown up in so long Oh how we've grown But I can't wait Go on
Castle on the Hill there by Ed Sheeran. I am a bit of an Ed Sheeran fan, so hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Well, we're very nearly at the end of the show, so here's a little taster of what's coming up next month. I'll be discovering some staycation highlights. I'll be back on my soapbox talking about the world. We'll have a special destination feature and of course, lots of fab sounds. Thanks for being with us. Yep, we are now at the top of descent preparing for our landing. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and I do hope that you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Jeremy Spake, Boarding Now. To play us out, I've chosen this little tune, which hopefully will give you the inspiration to come back next month. I look forward to seeing you then. You take great care of yourselves. Sweet harmony